Halleluja. Halleluja, Israel. Halleluja. For Yahweh's continual mercies and his Ahava still flows upon the house of Israel. And that's more than enough for us to be glad and for us to be happy. Hallelujah. On this Yom Ravii. Hallelujah. The last time I believe that I spoke unto your house of Israel was concerning the Yom of Yahweh. And if you do recall all the judgments of Yah upon Israel as he destroyed or showed his anger upon the house. But yet he left, or he always leaves, just a residue or a small remnant. Yeah. But even in all the destructions of Almighty Yahweh, he always reassures us, even when we look, up, look around us, Yisrael, yeah. at what we say is nature, the natural things, the way Yahweh has ordered. Even as we see in this winter time, as we are entering into winter, the leaves falling off the trees, everything is going into a dormant state, or into like as a famished state. But yet, we know by experience that the springtime, it shall come. And it shall bring to life everything that has died, everything that has laid dormant. It comes to life. So such as the house of Israel, even though it seems like we're dormant, we have been laid or hidden underground, yet Yahweh at his time shall bring us forth. He shall bring us up, Israel. Even as you watch how a seed is planted in the ground, in the earth, even the example of Yahshua HaMashiach, was not his body destroyed, torn, ripped? The scripture said he was marred as no man has been done. Can you imagine that, the flesh being torn, ripped? I'm not talking about bruises and cuts, skin deep. I talk about even into the muscle. There was great destruction upon the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yet the Torah says that it pleased Almighty Yahweh. Why did it please him, Yisrael? Why did it please Yahweh that Yahshua, a body of flesh as we are, had to suffer something so gruesome, something so harsh, but yet, it says that Yahweh, he was pleased in that. Why? Because even in that, Yisrael, as we look upon the body of Yisrael, we have been beaten, torn. We have allowed the world to segregate and part us and to split us and scatter us, Yisrael. But yet, Yahweh, even as we watch the Dom of Yahshua, as he was laid in the tomb, yet on the third day, Scripture says, he was risen or he raised again, Yisrael. So that is our hope. That is an important statement, Yisrael, that on the third day, the third day, the third day, the body of Yahshua rose again. So shall this body of Yisrael rise in the third day, in the appointed time that Yahweh has said. So as I enter into this, Yisrael, as we understand that even in the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach, he had to follow what was written of him, Torah. That his body had to be marred and laid upon and suffer ridicule and shame. That it may bring forth the excellence of Almighty Yahweh and his desire. Isn't that our desire, Yahweh, conditions of Yahweh? That we walk in the past, in the steps of Yahshua HaMashiach, that we crucify or we kill this old flesh. We allow the Torah of Yahweh to scourge it, to beat it, that it will bring forth the beauty of Almighty Yahweh. So as I enter into this Israel, turn with me to Matitia, Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. I want to begin reading. Because there was a lot of things that happened, even in the day of Yahshua HaMashiach and his journey to the stake. But what I want to stress among us, above all things, Israel, that even in the worst circumstances, where it seems like there's no hope, yet Yahweh will bring a way out of no way. He will bring hope out of a situation where they seem like there is no hope. 
He will open a door where there is no door. He will make that way. Hallelujah. What is that way, Zarkain? That way is Yahshua HaMashiach. So if we must walk in the way or in the path of Yahshua HaMashiach, then we must follow in the same footsteps and experience the same things, trials and tribulations as Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So where does our hope? Where does our inspiration come from? And knowing that even though we may pass from this life, yet Yahweh shall raise us again, hallelujah, in, in his beauty and in his power. Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. You know, as I, and I want to share this with you, Israel, I was um, studying this and reading and studying and pondering. I can relate to Rayak as he, as he says, there's just so many places that you can go to. Sometimes I just have to just stop. And just recollect myself that I can continue in the path. So any path that I may go tonight, Israel, it is the path of Almighty Yahweh is the way he's intended. So let me begin reading. It says, And Yahshua going up to Jerusalem, took 12 disciples, disciplined ones, the ones he had taught, shown examples, brought up in the Torah, disciples apart in the way, and said to them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be portrayed to the thief, chief Kohen, and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him unto death. Even Yisrael, don't you know that we are going to follow in this same path? That those that have been placed in what is today so-called the high priest of this day, or this religious Babylon, they shall condemn the house of Israel. And it says in verse 19, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, to be scourged, and to be offered up or crucified, or to crucify him. But a reassurance, Israel, it says here, and the third day, Yahshua says, he shall rise again. So Yahshua is speaking unto his disciplined ones. Did they understand? Did they comprehend what Yahshua HaMashiach was speaking, Yisrael? Do we understand? Do we understand that there is a time appointed to the body of Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, that it shall be what? Put to death. But on the third day, he says that we shall rise. He shall rise again. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said to her, what will you? And she says to him, grant that these my two sons may sit. I want you to understand the seriousness of the request that this Ema was asking of Yahshua HaMashiach. And this same request, Yisrael, we should ask of Almighty Yahweh. If we're sincere, if we're walking in Torah, he says that my two sons may sit. Now there is a great application concerning the two sons. Yes, right, yeah, but I, I want to stay on this path, hallelujah, that we're walking in. The one on your right hand and the other on the left in the Merkut, or the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Don't we desire to enter into the Merkut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh, that we may sit, hallelujah, on that great throne? Did not, were not a crown promised unto Israel, yeah? And a place, our proper place in the Melkut. Let me read on. But Yahshua says, see, there's something we must go through, Yisrael, that we must endure even to enter in into the kingdom, the Melkut of Almighty Yahweh, verse 23. And he said unto them, you shall drink indeed of my cup. What was the cup that Yahshua had to drink, Yisrael? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. What was the baptism of, um, of Yahshua HaMashiach? What was he implying? What was he talking about? 
He was talking about the endurance at the state, Yisrael. But to sit on my right hand and on my right, on my left, is not mine to give. It was not even in his power to give those places unto, unto these people. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared by my Abba. So even that position have not, give, have not been given unto Yahshua HaMashiach. Only that privilege has been given unto Almighty Yahweh. You think about that, Yisrael. Almighty Yahweh, the creator of all things, that has made us and formed us, has given us a place. Hallelujah. In his Melkut to sit, Yisrael. But there's a process. We must endure. We must endure the state. We must endure ridicule, Yisrael. We must endure being set apart or separated or scattered. And we have been scattered, been scattered throughout the OLM. And we have suffered somewhat ridicule. But it's not compared, Yisrael, or what we shall face in the Yom Akharis or in the last, the last days, Yisrael. Let me continue. Matt, Matitia Matthews, chapter 12, verse 38. Hallelujah. Verse 38, I want to begin reading. What I read before was somewhat to set a foundation, Yisrael, that there is a tribulation and trials that we must endure, that we may enter into the place that Almighty Yahweh has set aside for only those that endure unto the end. We know that this race is not given unto the swift nor to the strong, but those that endure. So we must be a people that endure, Yisrael. Understanding what Yahshua HaMashiach had to go through. Matitia chapter 12, verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and other Pharisees answered, saying, Rabbi, Master, Teacher, we seek or we will see a sign from you. Isn't that what the world seek after today? The house of, even the house of Israel. The Torah was written unto the house. We want signs. We want things to be shown that it may increase our faith or give us reason to believe. When Yahweh has provided the only reason that we need to believe, and that is in Yahshua HaMashiach. But yet, before we want to continue, oh, show me this, almighty Yahweh. Those that you're listening about via live stream. You want Yah to do this, reveal this, and then I believe. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works, Yisrael Yah. Verse 39, but he answered and said unto them, an evil and an adulterous generation, they seek, they seeketh after a sign. That's what a wicked and adulterous generation does, Israel. They seek after a sign. They want something to always be proven. Hallelujah. Is not Yahshua HaMashiach enough proof, Israel? Is not the dome of Yahshua that has washed us? that has cleansed us from all of our iniquities and our sins, is that not enough? That we have, we're not walking, or we should not be walking, Israel, in the past of the flesh. Have we not been redeemed? Made again? Been transformed, made anew? Not walking in the light of the world, but walking in the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. And it says here, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the Nabi or the prophet Yonah. Yes. Very important that we understand what Yonah, what he went through, Yisrael. Yeah. He was swallowed, swallowed up right. by a well. Right. The many that just take that as a, a nice little story. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not just a story, Yisrael. Yeah. Mm. And it's, it's a prophecy and an, it's an example yeah. even of the path of Yahshua HaMashiach. That he was in the belly of that beast for three days. Why was that? What purpose was that? That the things he, re, he questioned y'all, wanted to rebel against y'all, that those things may be purged out of him? You would think it wouldn't take three days. But there was a lot in him that had to come out. Or we may say, well, if I was in that position, it wouldn't take long. Israel, y'all, we fool. 
We're full of it. We're full of bull, Yisrael. Well, that's harsh words, Yahweh. Yahweh uses harsher words. So what is it going to take that us as being the house of Yisrael be purged? That we may be prepared what Yahweh has in store for us. Did he have a job in store for, for um, Yonah? Yes. Jonah, did it, was there not a purpose for him? Yes. He was going to make sure he fulfilled, fulfilled that purpose. Hallelujah. Let me read on. It says in, this, it says in verse 40, that for as Yonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, in darkness, there's no place he could turn, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the Olam, Yisrael. So that was an example that he was speaking unto the um those that follow him in that day, Yisrael, that there's a path that I must take. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the well, so shall this body, so shall I be in the heart of the earth for three days and for three nights, Yisrael. There's a period, Yisrael, that we shall be hid. Yeah, no doubt about that. Why? That the purpose of Almighty Yahweh will be fulfilled shall be fulfilled, Israel. Yeah. We think that we're going to escape without trials, without tribulation, without Yahweh purging those things that are embedded deep in our living, Israel. You think we're going to pass through easily? No, it's not going to be an easy path. But yet, if we continued in the Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach, right. the Ruach shall guide us into all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 41. It said, the men of Nivea shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Why? Because they repented at the preaching of Yonah. You think about it, Israel, y'all. Do we repent when we hear the preaching? When we hear the Torah of Yahweh being made known unto the house? Do we repent? Or do we allow this heart to become harder against the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Well, the scripture said that just this generation condemns us, rebukes us. Why? And behold, why? Because they repented at the preaching of Yehonah. But we find in this generation of people, us being the people of Almighty Yahweh, having a hardened heart. That when we hear the Torah of Yahweh, the preaching of Almighty Yahweh being proclaimed, that we do not repent. We do not Fall contrite before Almighty Yahweh at the throne and ask for forgiveness and repent truly before Almighty Yahweh. And Yahshua says this, and behold, a greater than Yonah is here, has come. He's talking about himself, Israel. In verse 42, he says, even the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear of the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do, you be, do you believe that a greater one than Yahonah, than Jonah, and than Solomon is here, Yisrael, today? That Yahshua HaMashiach, the rock of Almighty Yahweh, dwells in the house in the midst of Yisrael? That when we hear the preaching or the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, that it brings us to repentance. That it calls us to search our love. To search our hearts for the leaven. Those things that do not please him. And what should we do as a house? We should turn. We should turn at the reproof of Yahweh and not continue in those same passages right here. Yes. Hallelujah. Let us move on to Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. As we talk about the destruction or the cleansing or the purging. Yahweh wiping out Yisrael. Hallelujah. That we may come to the purity of what Yahweh desires the house to be in this Yom Akareth, these last days. Then saith Yahshua to them, All you shall be offended because of me, this night, for it is written, it is written, 
It has been established, it's been prophesied, it's been re written in the scrolls that I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Has not the shepherd been smitten, Israel? Yah? And have, have not the sheep, the house of Israel, Yah, been scattered throughout the four corners of the Olam? But he says, but after I am risen again, this is our comfort. Have not Yahshua been risen? Has he not arisen and I live, Yisrael Yah? Does not the Torah of Yahweh rise up in our bosom? He says, I will go before you to Galilee. Why? This is an act of redemption, of gathering, of restoration, Yisrael Yah. Verse 33. He said, and Kephah answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of you, yet will I never be offended. Have we not said that, Yisrael Yah, unto Almighty Yahweh? No matter what the Rayak or what the Zakain say to me, I won't be offended at that. But yet we find ourselves taking offense, don't we, Yisrael Yah? When the rebuke comes our way, when the chastisement comes our way. When it seems like what we want to do is being impeded. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Torah of Yahweh, that's its purpose. To bring you off the path you think you should be on onto the path where he desires you to walk in, Yisrael Yah. So we find ourselves being offended and we say we'll never be offended when the Torah of Yahweh goes forth or when the trials come my way that I will, not come, I will not be offended and I will not doubt. I will stand strong. But yet we find ourselves weavering. We find ourselves bending when the winds blow. Or when the strong storms come, we find ourselves doubting, don't we, Israel? Let us read on. And Yahshua said to him, truly I say to you this night, before the cock crow, you shall deny me thrice. And Kepha said to him, though I should die with you, Yet will I not deny you. Likewise, also said all of the disciplines, or the disciples, Israel. And I have found myself in this same predicament. Whereby I said I would stand. I would not fall. And yet I allowed my lust. I allowed my flesh, my doubts, my preconceived notions lead me in the wrong path. But you know what? The beauty of it all, Israel, y'all is that the Torah of Yahweh always go forth to bring us back. Even though the flock has been scattered, the Torah goes forth, Yisrael, yeah. to bring us all into the fold. What is that fold? That fold is the Torah. It is the mind of Yahshua that we should all be in one place. Yeah. So even though, as we see, as Kepha and the disciples that follow Yahshua HaMashiach, they said they would never lead him, leave him, yet as I read on. We're going to drop back a little, but as I read on, read on we're going to find out and we're going to see that they did fall away. Yes, as we fall away, Yisrael Yah. But yet, what did Yahshua HaMashiach do? He went and looked for the lost sheep, did he not? Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh that I was one of those lost sheep, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. Let us move on to verse 52 of the same chapter of Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 52. Then said Yahshua to him, put up again your swords into its place, for all they that take the sword should perish by the sword. Yeah. At this time, the Pharisees, those, Yahshua HaMashiach, he was betrayed, and there was those that came to bind him up and to take him into judgment. And he says, think you not that I cannot now pray to my Abba, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of Melachim. Yeah. But now then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be, Yisrael Yah. The Torah of Yahweh, the scripture must be fulfilled. We must follow this same path, Yisrael Yah, being taken, being accused, Falsely accused. There's a statement I will get to where it says that they, there were those that was 
brought or there was those that were sought to uh, bring into the council to uh, falsely accuse Yahshua HaMashiach. But as I read on, you're going to find out that they could not falsely accuse him of anything, that what they spoke was of a truth. But because they did not understand what has been prophesied and what has been spoken of Yahshua HaMashiach, they were yet left in darkness, Israel. Let us not be left in darkness. Let us allow the, the, the Ruach of Yahweh to lead us, Israel, into all things. Verse 55. And he says, In that same hour said Yahshua, to the multitudes, you are come to be out against a thief with swords and staves yes. for to take me. I sat daily with you teaching in the great tabernacle, and you laid no hands upon me. But all this was done that the Torah, that the scripture of the Nabi, the prophets, might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook, and they fled Israel. Did not they say they would stay? No matter life or death, we will not forsake you, Yahshua HaMashiach. And what happened? They forsook Yahshua HaMashiach. Have you never experienced those that said they would not forsake you, that they would stand with you, but yet when they saw the path that you was taking, that there was dangers, that they didn't want to enter into or go the same way you went, that you found those you thought were friends, yeah. those that you thought were out in the hole, they forsook you, or they forsake you, Israel. Yeah. So as they did with Yahshua HaMashiach. Really Verse 57. And they laid hold on Yahshua and led him away to Cephas, the high Kohen, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Kepha followed him afar off to the high Cohen's place and went in and sat with the servants to see the end yeah. or what the judgment was going to be. Now the chief Cohen and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Yahshua to put him to death. All they could find, the lies, whatever can be brought to condemn Yahshua HaMashiach that was sought after, fought witnesses, and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy, to annihilate, to wipe out the bayat of Yahweh and to build it in three days. That was a powerful statement, Israel. He said that I will destroy the bayat. Did you understand back in those days how the bayat or what is so-called, quote, temples, unquote, the high places that was set as when you pass by, it would be an ornament of beauty and awe? Don't you see that today, Israel? Yeah. What the world called these, what they call um, great or these massive assemblies? with these great, quote, churches holding thousands of thousands of people. These are just the temples of hell, Yisrael. That's all they are. But yet when Yahshua spoke this, it was perceived that he was talking about the bayat or the place of worship, which in terms he was talking about what Yahweh was going to do, Yisrael. Well, he was more so talking about his body. Are we not the bayat of Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Yes. So don't you understand that we're going to face the same thing? Did he not say that he would destroy the bayat or the body? Yes. Yes. So shall it be unto the house, Israel. Yes. We must be ready to face this. We must be ready to face harsh trials and tribulations. Yes. We think we're enduring something now. But these are just petty things, Israel. We're going to walk the same path as Yahshua HaMashiach. The same way. But yet our comfort is in three days, Israel. Three days. Three days. Hallelujah. He shall bring it forth and he shall build it again. Hallelujah. Let me read that again. Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, verse 61. 
And he said, this fellow said. So this man that was accusing him, he had to have heard it somewhere or something of the sort. Did Yahshua, did he speak this or did he not? Yes, yes. Yes, he did speak it, Yisrael. He did speak it. Verse 62. And the Kohen arose and said to him, answer you nothing? What is it which these witness against you? But Yahshua, he held his shalom. Yes. He held his peace, Yisrael. Do we know how to hold our shalom? Not to rage against our accusers? Don't you know that it is intended, Yisrael? It has been laid. Was it not intended for Yahshua HaMashiach to come to this point in his life where he shall be falsely accused, Yisrael? Yes. And the Kohen answered and said to him, I adjure you, I plead with you, you by the living Yahweh, that you would tell us whether you be Messiah, the son of Almighty Yahweh. Let us continue in chapter 27, verse 39, Yisrael. This is concerning as Yahshua HaMashiach was on the stake. He suffered ridicule, shame, yes. blasphemy, yes. beatings yes. that no man have ever endured or experienced. Yes. Stake on the stake, Yisrael. Yes. Why? Because of our transgressions. Right. Because of the sins of Yisrael. It was all laid upon him, Yisrael, yes. to suffer our sins and that shame. Yes. Verse 27 Chapter 27, verse 39 of Matthews. It says, and they passed by and they reviled him. They mocked him, cruelly mocking him, wagging their heads. They were shaking their heads mockingly unto Yahshua HaMashiach and saying, you that destroyed a buy it and build it in three days, save yourself. Don't you see how they mock Yahshua HaMashiach? If you be the son of Yahweh, you say you are, you say that you are mighty and that you do all these miracles and these things, you say that you're the son of Yahweh, they said, come down from the state. Don't you see how even Satan was still egging or mocking Yahshua HaMashiach? Don't you know this was not the first time that he tried Yahshua HaMashiach? He also had to face him. He also had to face him, Yisrael, yeah, as Satan said, would you not turn this loaf? I see that you're hungry. Why don't you make this loaf and turn, or this rock or this stone and turn it into bread? Okay. Or when he said on Yahshua HaMashiach, cast your foot against the stone. Mm -hmm. Did not he tempt Yahshua HaMashiach and his stance? So the same spirit at that time was even here. In the midst of the people, Yisrael, yeah, as they mocked Yahshua HaMashiach, said, if you be the son, if you be the son of Yahweh, come down from that state. We're going to face the same things, Yisrael. Yeah. We're going to be mocked and ridiculed the exact same way. So don't allow the world. Don't allow family. Because they will try to tear you down, Yisrael. Yeah. Those that do not walk in the Torah of Yahweh, that we, that we say are blood relatives, they will try all they can to, to, um, to stop you from walking in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Likewise, also, it says, the chief Kohen of that day mocked him, mocking him. With the scribes and all the elders, they said, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the stake. And we will believe him. He said how they were trying to tempt Yahshua HaMashiach. He was hearing all these things, Yisrael, yeah. But yet he understood. Could he not come down from there? Could not a legion of Melikim came if he were called upon them? But he understood that there was a purpose. What was that purpose? To fulfill the will of Yahweh. If he did not fulfill the will of Yahweh or stay on that state, Yisrael, yeah, there would be no redemption for us today. Hallelujah. So that just as Yahshua endured all things, as he endured hardness, 
Why would we not want to endure that for him, Yisrael? We owe it unto Almighty Yahweh and his offering in Yahshua HaMashiach. That no matter what we go through, that we stay the path. That, do, that we do not turn to the left or to the right. But if we see the enemy coming our, our way, that we will head straight into the battle, Yisrael. Knowing that Almighty Yahweh is leading us. Knowing that Yahshua HaMashiach is walking before us and he has walked before us, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 43. He trusted in Yahweh, let him deliver himself now. If he will, save him. For he said, I am the son of Almighty Yahweh. Have you ever been mocked? Oh, you say you are walking in the Torah of Yahweh, but you have done this. Oh, you think you're so right. Yes, I've been washing the down. I have been cleansed from my iniquities and from my sins. I am, in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh, and through the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach, I stand right, a Siddiq, before you. Don't be ashamed to testify, Yisrael, of the mercies of Yahweh and the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach. For if we are ashamed of him, then he shall be ashamed of us, Yisrael, in the latter days. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Let us move on into Marcus, Mark chapter 8, verse 27, Yisrael. Just as an assurity, we are, we shall endure harsh things, Yisrael. Sure, we shall. As it has been written that Yahshua HaMashiach mm -hmm. shall face all these things, yet it is also written that in three days. Let us stand upon that, Yisrael, if not nothing else. Hallelujah. That in the third day, in the third day, Yahweh shall bring us up from the heat. Even though we have been scattered, Yahweh shall bring us all together, Yisrael. Though it seemingly that the enemy stomps us into the ground under their feet, yet Yahweh said that we shall be risen up above our enemies as an eagle flies Hi, hallelujah, upon the mountain top. And Yahshua went out and his disciples into the towns of Syria, Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Who do men say that I am? Who do we say that Yahshua is today, Yisrael? What do we testify of Yahshua HaMashiach? Don't you know our testimony is more than what we speak verbally? Yes, because the tongue, we can dress some of the most ugliest things up <clears throat> with our tongues. It's our walk, Yisrael, that testifies of the dom of Yahshua, of the power of Almighty Yahweh, the beauty of Yahweh. It's how we walk. It's how we present ourselves amongst each other, and among the world, Yisrael. Yeah. So he said, who do men say that I am? And they answered unto Yah Yahshua, mm -hmm. Yachahan the Baptist, mm -hmm. but some say Eliah, and others one of the prophets. And he says to them, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Who is Yahshua unto us, Yisrael? Who do we say that he is? And Kephi answered and says to him, You are Hamashiach, Yahshua, the son of Almighty Yahweh. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things. The house of Israel must suffer many things, Israel, and be rejected of the elders and of the Kohim and of the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. Don't we, still have, don't we see how Yahshua repetitively reminded them at this time that after three days, 
Why do you think Yahshua kept reminding them of that? Because he knew the path that they would take, that they would forget. That was one of the most important things that he wanted him to remember. Not only that he was going to face the stake and die, but that on that third day. And don't you know, when that time came to pass, the death of Yahshua HaMashiach, that they all forgot, that they had to be reminded that on the third day, Yisrael Yah, do we need Yahweh to remind us that on the third day? Well, what is that remembrance? That remembrance is Yahshua HaMashiach. Because he did get up, Yisrael Yah. He is alive today, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. So that promise is a promise that we, even though we have been buried and seemingly forgotten, that he shall rise or bring us back to life or raise us up, Yisrael Yah. Let me move on. You know, even at the times where it seems like we're being tried or we have been tried and doubt tries to usher its way in, all you have to remember, Yisrael Yah, is on the third day. Even at those trying times, just repeat to yourself what y'all should repeat. On the third day that you shall get up. On the third day you shall rise above all your problems. That even in the tomb, as I continue, that the scribes and the Pharisees, they wanted to make sure that it was sealed. Don't you know that Satan wanted to make sure that we are held down? That we sealed into the grave, that we shall not rise again? But the power of Almighty Yahweh and the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach is more power than anything that the enemy could place in the path of Yisrael. For we are overcomers, Yisrael. And we overcome through the might and the power of Almighty Yahweh. But when he turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Kepha. Let me back up. And he spoke to them saying openly, these things saying openly. And Kepha took him, in verse 32, and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about to look, at, look on his disciples, he rebuked Kepha, saying, Get you behind me. And what did he call him? Yeah. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Satan. Don't you see how he allowed the spirit of the enemy to enter into him, even at that instance? Yes, yeah. y'all. He let down his guard. He said, for you savor not the things that be of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you you know any time you try to stop what Yahweh is doing, Israel, that you're working in the spirit of Satan, and you do not savor, you do not ahava, you you do not love the things of Almighty Yahweh. But he says, you do not savor, you savor not the things of Almighty Yahweh, but the things that be of men. So anytime we try to stop the flow of things, try to stop the flow of the Ruah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, we do not savor, we do not ahava the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, but the things of men, the things of the flesh, the things that the flesh desire, Yisrael. And, we had, and when he had called the people to him with his disciples also, he said to them, Whosoever will come after me, let him, what? What does it say? Deny Deny himself. We must deny self, Yisrael. If we desire this baptism of Yahshua HaMashiach to walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, then there are trials and tribulations that we must go through. And there are times, all the time, we must deny ourselves, Yisrael, and take up his stake. Did not Yahshua HaMashiach take up his state, Yisrael? And follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall you lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the message, the same shall save it, Yisrael. So let us not try to preserve our lives. Let us not try to run away from the trials and the tribulations or try to skirt around the stake what Yahweh has desired this path for us to walk in, Yisrael. The same path that Yahshua, Hamashiach, walked in. For in verse 6 it says, For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the world 
and lose his nephesh and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the splendor of Almighty Yahweh with the Kadesh Melechim. So let us not be ashamed of Yahshua HaMashiach and what we must endure, Yisrael. It's not a catwalk. But yet, if, we, if their iniquity is found in our bosom, that should be our stumbling block. And it should make this path this way hard. Yahshua did say unto us that my way is easy. Did, it, did not he say this yoke or this burden is light, Yisrael? So this walk, even though at times it seems hard and it seems tough, Yisrael, it is a light thing. It is a light thing, Yisrael. So let us walk in the comfort and knowing that all that Yahweh has commanded, all that he has spoken, Yisrael, it shall be brought to pass. We shall overcome. We are overcomers. Hallelujah. In Yahshua HaMashiach. Turn with me to Mark chapter 14, verse 53. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what men may say unto us, Yisrael, y'all. We must stay the course. Though there are times we have, brought, we have been discouraged, we have watched others fall by the wayside, those that said that they would not leave you, that they would be a strength, but yet we watched them fall, have we not, Yisrael, y'all? Hallelujah. It says in Mark chapter 14, verse 53, And they led Yahshua away to the high coin, and with him were assembled all the chief coim and the elders and the scribes. Hallelujah. 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 Totally Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let me backtrack a little, Israel. Hallelujah. Isn't Yahweh tough? And his mercies, they endure forever. Hallelujah. Here's another, this is another example or another account of Yahshua HaMashiach being brought unto the, to the elders, Israel. And they led Yahshua away to the high Kohen. And with him were assembled the chief Kohen and elders and the scribes. And careful follow him afar off, it said. Even into the place of the high Kohen. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. I read this before, but this is another count, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And the chief Kohen and all the counts of salt for witness against Yahshua to put him to death. And they found none. Don't you know that at that time they're going to find all they can for reason to put the house of Israel to death? Israel, but they're not going to find anything. For many bear fault witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose a certain and bear fault witness against him, saying, We heard him saying that I will destroy the temple to buy it, and is made, that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witnesses agree together. It did not work. Their witness against Yahshua HaMashiach. And the high Kohen st stood up in the midst and asked Yahshua, saying, Act to you nothing? What is it that these men witness against you? But he's held his shalom and answered nothing. Again, the high Kohen asked him, and said to him, Are you Yahshua HaMashiach, the son of Almighty Yahweh? And Yahshua said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of the Shemayims. And the high Kohen rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witness? You have heard the blasphemy. Did he blaspheme Israel? 
No, he did not. For that was his place, just as it is our place to sit at the throne of Almighty Yahweh. And they all condemn him to be guilty of death. And the same began to spit on him and cover his face and to buffet or to beat or to slap him upon his face and to say to him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Kepha was beneath in that place or in the lower parts, there come one of the maids of the high Cohen, and she saw Kepha warming himself and looked upon him and said, Aren't you also with Yahshua of Nazareth? But he denied. There's, he is denying Yahshua. Did he not say that you would deny me thrice? Yes, yes. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what you say. But he went out into the porch, and the cock did crow, Yisrael. Have the cock crowed on us? Have we found ourselves denying Yahshua HaMashiach? Or... Walk in a way that is not circumspect because of those that have been around us. Yes, right, y'all? And the maid saw him again and began to say to him that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied again. And a little after, they stood by and said again to Kepha, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. And your speech agrees there too. But he again, he began to curse and to swear. Isn't that something, Israel? Yeah? Saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time, the cock did crow. And Kepha called to mind the word that Yahshua said to him, Before the cock crow twice, you shall deny me thrice. And then he thought thereon, and he wept. Have we ever considered, Israel? Yeah? We deny the Dom of Yahshua and what he has done for us. That as the world asks, aren't you a follower of Yahshua HaMashiach? It is, it's a shame that we deny him and say, no, we're not. Or we should walk, be walking in the past of Yahshua HaMashiach, and the world see us walking in the same way that they're walking in, Yisrael. It should not be a mustard house of Yisrael. Hallelujah. Turn me to Yokohana, chapter 2, verse 12. Hallelujah. We're going to step back a little bit, Yisrael, in Torah, in Scripture. Yokohana, chapter 2, verse 12. It says here in this account that after this, he went down to Capernaum. He and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And they continued not many days. And the Yehudim, and the Yehudim Passover was at hand. And Yahshua went up to Jerusalem and found in the great tabernacle those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers of money sitting. So he went to this place and he saw what should have been the bite of Almighty Yahweh, the most Kodesh place, and have been turned into a house of merchants. This is not what Yahweh desired of the bayit. Have we allowed ourselves to be sold, Yisrael Yah, to the cares of this life? Have we allowed the things of this life to merchant us or to buy us, Yisrael Yah? Don't you understand why it's important for the house of the bayit of Yisrael Yah to be destroyed? Or to be cleansed, Yisrael Yah? Because these things do exist in the house of Yah. Let's see if Yahshua Habashiah agree, agree with that statement in verse 14. And he found in the great tabernacle those that sold oxen, sheep, and doves, and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the great tabernacle. Don't you see how Yahshua HaMashiach took the scourge and he had to drive out the things that polluted the tabernacle of Almighty Yahweh, the Kodesh place, the tabernacle? Don't he know he has to put the scourge on us, Yisrael, that those things that do not please him 
will be driven out of us and the sheep and the oxen and pour out the changers' money. We have been bought with a price, Israel. That is the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach. What would it profit us, Israel, to gain the whole world, to have riches? Would you sell out your soul? Would you sell out your being, your body, your tabernacle for the riches of the world? And pour out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. It seemed like Yahshua HaMashiach was wroth. He was very angry. And he showed his indignation upon this bayet, Israel. Yes, yes. Don't you know this is an example of what Almighty Yahweh will do in the day of Yahweh, the Yom, the Yom of Almighty Yah? Do we not recall that message? The day of Almighty Yahweh. He's going to overturn everything, Israel. He's going to put out of the bayet all things that offend him. And he said to them that sold dove, take these things hence out. Make not my Abbas buy it, his house, a house of merchandise. Don't you know, Israel, that's what we have become. We have allowed ourselves to be bought with the cares of this life, with the riches of this life, Israel. Yeah. And his disciples remember that it was written of him, the zeal of your house has eaten me up. Don't you know that the zeal of Yahweh is going to be upon his house, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? Did not he say it will begin in the bayah? Yeah. Don't you see why, Yisrael Yah? In this simple example, hey, Yahshua had to go and purge out the house. We must be purged, Yisrael Yah. We must be cleansed out of all things that offend Abba Yahweh. So what is it going to take, the state? The state is also an example of the fire, the trying. The trials of this life, Israel, that we may come forth as what? Pure gold. The purest of gold, Israel. Then said Yahudim, then answered Yahudim and said to him, What sign show you to us, seeing that you do these things? See, they still yet was looking for a sign. An ex a reason why all these things were happening. And as I move on, you will see as Yahshua ask even the disciples, don't you understand why these things have taken place? Allow your minds to go back and see the examples in Scripture have been set, have been prophesied. All these examples to show step by step the path that Yahshua HaMashiach had to state that even his body, the tabernacle, would be destroyed. This was an example of his body, what it had to endure. Why? Did he sin before Almighty Yahweh? But yet, all of our sin, sins were placed upon his body. So what had to happen to the body of Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach? It had to be destroyed. It had to be beaten. It had to be scourged, Israel. And Yahshua answered in verse 19. Yahshua answered and he said to them, bear with me, Israel. I'm, I'm trying to make an, a point, and it's an important point, Israel, that on the third day, even after all these things, that on the third day, all this destruction, the Yom of Almighty Yahweh, yet on the third day he shall restore Israel. Yeah. And Yahshua said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. I will raise it up. I will bring it forth out of nothing, out of a pile of, or a heap of destruction. Of mess. Did not Yahweh bring us out of a pile, out of a dung hill? Did he not reach way down, Israel, to pick us up? Hallelujah. Verse 20. Then said to Yahudim, 40 days, I mean, 40 and 6 years was this building, this temple, this bayah, it took to build this building. And will you rear it or repair it or rebuild it in three days? They did not understand Yisrael, yeah. but he spoke of the bayat, of the high place, of the most kodesh place. He spoke of the, the, the bayat of his body, of his body. Are we not the body of Yahshua HaMashiach? Then therefore, in verse 22, then therefore... He was risen from the dead. His disciples, 
his disciples, remember that he has said this to them, that they believe the scripture and the word which Yahshua has said. Yeah. Do we believe what Yahshua has said unto us, Israel? That on the third day we shall rise again? Yeah. Out of a pile of nothing, yeah. out of the dung hill, we shall rise again, Yisrael, yeah. on the third day. Hallelujah. Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 1. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. It says in Isaiah 53, verse 1, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Are we not tender, Yisrael? Yeah. For he shall grow up as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. And he has no form, no commonness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him, of Yahshua HaMashiach. So even at this example, house of Yisrael, there's no commonness about the house of Yisrael. Even at this time, there is no beauty. But the Torah even talks about even how the earth, the Olam, groans and mourns for the day of the manifestation of the sons of the vain, of the children of Almighty Yahweh to be made manifest. So even though we look through this glass darkly, Yisrael, the house of Yisrael, as we look upon the nation, it is very small, and it cannot even be seen, Israel. Yes. And it is tender, a small thing. Verse 2. And, we, we shall, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. Verse 3. It says that he is despised and rejected of men. Are we despised and rejected? Don't you know he said that we shall be despised and rejected of men? Because he was first despised and rejected Israel, a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. And he hid as if it were our faces from him. Do we hide our face from Yahshua HaMashiach? He was despised and we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our griefs, Israel, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of our mighty Yahweh and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Was he wounded for your transgressions, Yisrael? Do we believe the report? He was wounded for our transgressions. He took the beating we should have taken, Yisrael. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The, ch the chastement of our shalom was upon him. And with his stripes, Yisrael, we are healed. We are healed, Yisrael, with his stripes. Hallelujah. So no matter what comes your way, Yisrael, we are healed by the stripes of Yahshua HaMashiach. He endured them for us. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have been scattered. And we have turned everyone to his own way. We all got different ways, Yisrael. For what a man perceives is right, his own eye is right, Yisrael. So we all go about our own ways, and Yahweh has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Don't you know we have to go through the same path, Yisrael? Though we are afflicted and mocked, we should not open our mouths. Or we're not going to open our mouths. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Our time is coming, Israel. And as a sheep before her shearer is done. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And he made his, he, and he made his grave 
with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it says here, Yisrael, it pleased Almighty Yahweh to bruise him. It pleased Almighty Yahweh to bruise him, Yisrael. He was put to grief. And when you shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his zirah, his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand, Israel. Yes, yes, yes. So even at this, we see where we are headed, Israel. Don't you know Yahweh is pleased when we are tried? When we are scourged, when we are beaten, Yisrael, yes, right, don't you understand why it pleases him? As I brought the example of pure gold, if you're seeking for the purest of gold, which is the highest in quality and value, just imagine that you are um, one that purified gold and fire. You try it one time, and your heart's delighted, but yet you still see a little skirmishes here and there, a little impurities. But yet, there's progress being made. Yeah. So you try it again, and again, and again. And even though it's not perfect just yet, you're going to continuously put the heat to the gold. Why? Because you're seeking the highest of price for that gold, Israel. Yahweh is seeking the highest of price because there's no price that can be set Upon Yisrael. So what is he going to do, Yisrael? He's going to try us. Tribulations come our way. That we should come forth as pure gold before Almighty Yahweh. So it pleased Yahweh to try his house, his bayah. It says it pleased him to bruise the back of Yahshua HaMashiach. He shall, he shall see of the travail of his own soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servants be justified, so justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his love to death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So I barak Yahweh through Yahshua HaMashiach that through my transgressions and my iniquity that he buried all, Yisrael. He buried all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me, Yisrael. I'm coming to a close. Just bear with me, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Because, you know, when, when I started, it, it just uh, lifted my legs so much, Yisrael, that I have to continue in this course. Because allow the rock of Yahweh to open your ears, Israel. Yes, Hallelujah. That we understand yes, that we shall get up. Yes. That Yahweh will rise us up. Even now, Israel, stand on the tour of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Come up from the low places. Yes. Don't allow the enemy to incarcerate you or to bind you. Yes. Yahweh has set our nephews free yes. like a bird, yes. like a sephora out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we are escaped, Israel. Yeah. Yahshua has made the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. So no matter what trials or tribulations or what we shall go through or what we shall endure, Israel, yeah, because trials, they're coming. Yes, they Just as we sung the song, though the winds may rage yes. and though the storm clouds, they may come. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yet we shall not be ashamed to testify of the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. Come on, Israel. This is the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He shall raise us up on the third day. We shall be put in the belly of the earth. Here, it shall seem like there is no hope. It shall seem like a worthless thing that Yahweh has, has um, implanted or, in, or put in Israel. 
But yet he shall raise us up again, just as Yahshua HaMashiach has raised up. At the same Ruach that dwelt in Yahshua HaMashiach raised him from the dead. Don't you know it's going to raise us up? Don't you know right now, if we allow the rock of Yahweh, of Yahshua HaMashiach, to dwell in our mortal bodies, that at any time it will bring us up, rise us up, and we shall overcome anything, any trial, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. Anything shall come our way, and we shall overcome it, Yisrael Yah. Metitia chapter 27, verse 57. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Amathea named Yosef, who also himself was Yahshua's disciple. He went to Pilate in verse 58 and begged for the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. This is after Yahshua HaMashiach had died, Yisrael, on the stake. And Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Yosef had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn out in a rock. And he had rolled a great stone over the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Miriam Magdalene and the other Miriam sitting over against the sepulcher. Verse 62. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief called him and the Pharisees came together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver, they call Yahshua HaMashiach the deceiver, but did not realize that they were deceived. Don't you know that if Satan, if they would have knew that he was truly the son of Almighty Yahweh, they would not have sent him to the state of Israel, Yah. So this was planned even from the beginning, that prophecy that the word of Yahweh would come to pass. While he was yet alive, after three days, he said, I will rise again. So, in verse 64, command therefore that the sepulchre could be made sure until the, to the, until, till the third day. So even though that the stone was rolled on the sepulchre, and it took... More than just one or a couple of men to move that great stone, Israel. It wasn't meant to be removed again. But these men wanted to make sure that it was not moved. That the body of Yahshua HaMashiach would not come forth. Lest his disciplined ones come by night and seal him away. Steal him away. And say to the people that he has risen from the dead. So at the last error shall be worse than the first. So Pilate said to them, you have a watch, go your way. Make it as sure as you can. Make sure that it cannot move. Yeah. Verse 27, verse 66. So they went and made a sepulchre shul and they sealed the stone and set a watch. Chapter 28, verse 1. And at the end of the Shabbat, as it began to dawn toward the first day after the Shabbat, came Mary and Magdalene and the other Miriam to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for a Melchim of Yahweh descended from the Shemayims and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it, Yisrael. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the man came answered and said to the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Yahshua, which was crucified, but he is not here. He is risen, as he has said. Come see the place where Master Yahshua did lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples, that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he goes before you to Galilee. Did I not talk about Galilee at the beginning of this teaching, Israel? This is a time of redemption, Israel, to gather the lost sheep of Israel back. And there you shall see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher, 
and with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples the word, Israel. Yeah. So don't you know this is the example of what we should do as messengers, Yisrael, yeah. elders, Zakain. We should let Yisrael know and encourage him that Yahshua HaMashiach, he did rise from from the grave, from the sepulchre, Yisrael. And just a few more verses as I bring this message to a close, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I pray it's been a, somewhat of an inspiration to your love, because it has inspired me, Yisrael. Hallelujah. To walk in this path and not to turn away. Hallelujah. In Gileana, Revelation chapter 1, verse 13 through verse 18, I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about his paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like white wool. This is a description of Yahshua HaMashiach as he sat on the throne of Almighty Yahweh. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet light in fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had his right hand, in his right hand, seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. We brought Yahweh for the two-edged sword of Almighty Yahweh. And his countenance was as the sun shines in its strength, in his strength. Right. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet oh. as one dead. Yeah. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying to me, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that lives, hallelujah, and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And act, and it is so, and have the keys, and I have the keys of hell and death also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Way. Don't you know, Israel, y'all, that we shall be risen and experience this great beauty? As Yahshua HaMashiach, as he sat on the right hand of Almighty Yahweh. There's a place that has been hewn out and prepared for each of us, um, Yisrael, and it's not even for Yahshua to give those places. But it's only for Almighty Yahweh to give those places, hallelujah, on his throne. Don't you desire to see him, Yisrael? Hallelujah. So what must we do? We must continue in this path. No matter... What comes our way? Did Yahshua turn? He knew what was coming. He knew what he had to endure. But he knew that it pleased the Abba. And not only that, he knew there was a remnant, a zira, that had to be redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray this has been an inspiration to you. Levim Yisrael. Hallelujah. Allow the Ruach. And I pray that the Ruach of Yahweh will fill your hearts, your minds, and that his joy will overflow you house of Israel. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Let us rise to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us shoot. Let us turn unto Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we do barak you for this simple truth on tonight, Abba Yahweh. That you have promised us, Yahweh, a place that even though, Abba Yahweh, trials may come our way, you have given us the power to overcome. Yes. You've given us the power to rise up, Yahweh, yes. and even to condemn yes. whatever comes up to try to hinder us on this path. Yes. So we do barak you, Abba Yahweh, that you have given us free liberty in yes. Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. We ask that you will look and barak, look upon those that have to go back to their homes, Abba Yahweh, has, they have come from near and afar. That your Ruach, that your Melikim will camp around about them yes. to protect them. And not only them, but those that are listening by via of live stream, yes. that we stand upon your Dabar Abba Yahweh. Yes. 
But in all things we do barak you, and we do give you toda. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do cry out, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh Barak, you all Yisrael. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!